Suzanne Legrand, and today on We Are All In This Together, I am speaking with Ken Pico, who is a poet and the owner of the Rocking Frog Cafe. To just give us a little bit of background, you could talk about what it's like to be a small business owner on a good day. You know, small business is, is um, a crazy thing to do in the first place, but it's really rewarding also, um, and, and just in terms of you know, before the pandemic, um, I had taken over, um, acquired this coffee shop, Rocky Frog, um, in 2017. I, I quickly realized that just, just running business wasn't very fulfilling for me. Um, it might be for some other people, but there had to be something more that we could do for uh, the community, the city, you know, um, specifically <clears throat> uh, artists um, wanted to be, uh, I wanted to provide a space for uh, musicians and poets and um, artists um, to have a safe space to perform and, you know, be able to compensate them for that um, to the best of our abilities. We're not a large venue, but but we still, you know, over the last year, um, right, exactly a year, actually, March of last mm-hmm. year to March of this year, um, we built a program for uh, weekly events. So we had a, had a poetry night that uh, that uh, was received with great success. It was, um, it was, what's the word? It was supported by um, a couple of the other poetry events in town and poetry uh, in particular, the Portland Poetry Slam and Slam Landia. And uh, the, the man I worked with, um, Igor, he, he was involved in that community and was able to uh, get some support for it. So every Saturday night we threw a, an open mic uh, and a, and a Sort of a spoken word style poetry night, and uh, and that was you know that was great. And we um, went on to do music on Sundays. We had a we had a community art night on Mondays where people could come and work on their own projects or, or team projects. And there was always like a class being taught. So we had like a woodworking and a glass blowing and a, or, or not glass blowing but stained glass night. And it was all kinds of fun. Um, and we even started doing a movie night on Wednesday. So these are the kinds of things that I really, you know, uh, made it worthwhile for me um, as a business owner in, in, a, in a town like Portland specifically that, that has always celebrated the arts um, to to be giving back in some way um, and to also, like, stimulate my own creative process um, mm-hmm. and be a part of that community. So... So we actually, you know, that stuff was was really picking off, and, um, and we had we have a a, a community that supports us um, and that was participating regularly in these stuff. I have heard that for many small business owners, and particularly in food service, you you run on a very small profit margin. And oh yeah, wondering- absolutely. If you could talk a little bit about that and what has happened since um, the pandemic hit. Well, unfortunately, um, you know, for a lot of these places, uh, these kind of old school Portland brick and mortar places, you know, diamond seating is kind of our charm and our, our draw. Um, a lot of, you know, specifically, um, for instance, we make you know fresh donuts and. And those things, uh, that product in particular is is best served hot and best served in in this you know charming little little coffee shop and with these books all around you and you know it had its own draw and um, you know once people were not allowed to um, be in here and also just you know being conscious of better conscious of social distancing, it's um it's a tough answer because on the one hand um you know this is great that we're 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 being proactive about these things on the other hand it kind of left these small businesses like high and dry just in terms of not having uh a lot of hmm, 
not having a support plan from the, the city or the federal government in place in a timely fashion to mitigate uh, the economic, you know, catastrophe that happened. So, mm-hmm. you know, my business and other businesses, we lost, you know, 90% of our, our daily land for, and like you said, you know, a lot of these places operate on razor thin margins. Um, to lose that revenue stream, uh, you know, puts us in a tough bind because we, you know, we're having to lay off employees, you know, there's tens of thousands of people out of work, um, there's overhead costs that are just being deferred instead of uh, forgiven. Luckily, some of these small places, they don't have, you know, a ton of debt, and so if I go, you know, work for a job for a few months, I might have some cash to put back into it, mm-hmm. but, you know, it, it varies, you know, it's like some places are, you know, Powell's has a few months of of savings and that's it. And then they're threatening to, you know, they're not going to be able to open again. Yeah. Um, so, so it is really important um, because I've, I've been to a couple of places, you know, just yesterday I went to my favorite sandwich shop in Hawthorne and uh, it's like Devil's Dill and they have a bar and it's just the owners there now. And, and they were just as perplexed, honestly, if this was like a video interview with different businesses, um, it would just be, it would just be so uh, visible, the distress that everybody has, because you know, I'm talking to these guys and they're saying, we, we're, we're, there's, no, there's no help, there's no information. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and all they're doing is offering us more debt, and I'm seeing those posts online too. So from other business owners, and so it's you know it's tricky um, because we don't know what's going to happen. Is there anything that people in the community can do to help support you through this period? So um, you know, besides. The fact that a lot of us are, you know, doing the best that we can to offer, uh, you know, takeout and delivery. Um, we also, you know, <clears throat> I also understand that a lot of people have lost their jobs. It's really difficult to expect, you know, uh, the, the revenue to stay the same, even if we were, you know, even if our takeout and delivery was already like a solid option that, you know, we hadn't really invested a lot of time or effort into that. Um, so, I mean, there is, you know, there lots of businesses are still offering their menus to go, but it's not enough. And, um, you know, other, other ideas that have been floated around and, and people have adapted to this is, you know, buying gift cards to the businesses that you love. Um, you know, if you, if you go there frequently, you're going to want to go back once everything starts to clear up, you know, you can always call that business, um, you can always load up, you know, say, hey, I want to buy a gift certificate or, or you know, make a roping tab uh, for, for under my name, you know, put up 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever you can do. Um, those things really help the small businesses, like, get it through this time by giving a little bit of uh, cash fusion so that they can, you know, cover those payroll costs that are abruptly um, forced on them, and also their, their their line of credit, essentially for buying supplies to to stay open. Um, those things are those things are really helpful. Um, other than that, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how this looks right now, but any way that people can, you know, contact um, their local representatives and say. Hey, these businesses need economic assistance. Um, what's currently being offered for, for for you know, and that's from the city or the state, you know. Um, but what's currently being offered right now is, is really just more debt. Um, you know, the, the the small business administration opened up its uh, disaster loans uh, to affected areas, including Oregon. Um, and and apparently that uh, you know that process is right now the systems are crashing it's hard to get a hold of people but even if we you know did go that route a lot of businesses are really anxious to take on more loans um, considering that they're already operating on those razor thin margins 
So, you know, we don't, I don't think anybody expects to get a big check from the government for a month of revenue that they lost, but, uh, you know, some sort of uh, representation is, 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 in, is crucial um, for these places to, to have some sort of support from the, from the government uh, when it comes down to it. Basically, uh, a lot of these small places need help with covering the cost of the workers that were laid off. They've got payroll costs to cover. Um, you know, those, those things are like upfront direct economic assistance um, from the government would be helpful. We don't expect to make <clears throat> the profits that we lost, but we do um, request that there's help covering our upfront costs. You know, what a lot of people are concerned about is that, you know, in three months or two months or even or even longer, when the things come start coming back online, um, a lot of the utility costs and uh, rent is going to just be deferred. You know, the, the city doesn't have the ability to stop rent from being collected. There's going to be a lot of landlords and and ladies or um you know, small business owners themselves. Um, so it's not their fault for wanting to collect rent. But if there's no support for them and their mortgages, there's no support for their tenants who end up having, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of active payments due. And then on top of that, you add more debt more through disaster loans. Um, it's a lot of uh, to, you know, um, do more than just try to claw their way back out of this. Um, I, my prediction is that you are going to see a lot of people uh, shutter their doors um, permanently. Unfortunately, um, if there's not, you know, some sort of uh, direct economic assistance to these small businesses. I am Suzanne Legrand, and this is We Are All in This Together.